Hello everybody, so in my last video I make this tin oxide zinc battery. Uh, so to make this battery I was inspired by some patent. So the link will be in the description that you can make a look about this patent. Uh, but clearly I don't have all the materials which I need to make the same battery which is described in this patent. So that's why I need to improvise a little bit. And yeah, this battery looks really interesting to me, especially because uh, this zinc based battery can reach the cell voltage of 2 volts. Yesterday, when I make uh, this video about tin oxide zinc battery, I experimented a little bit with my version of tin oxide zinc battery. And what I found in my experimentation with this battery, uh, I found that if I add my new water-based conductive ink into active material, like a binder, then I get drastic improvements of overall performance of this cell. So in this video I will make two tin oxide zinc cells. One cell will have some active material without binder. And the second cell will have active material uh, made with the conductive ink as binder. And then you will see the performance uh, the cell without any binder and the cell with the binder. So first I will make a cell without binder. So here I have the positive pin collector which is some graphite plate the negative electrode which is the zinc the separator the separator is some toilet paper uh, the active material is some tin oxide and uh, into this tin oxide I will also add some uh, activated carbon so this activated carbon is made from activated carbon and 10% of uh, carbon black the carbon black here is some uh, conductive additive to improve uh, to improve the conductivity of the materials. So the weight of tin oxide will be one point one point five grams. And the weight of uh, activated carbon will be 0 0.5 grams. Okay, this will be good. And into this mix I will add uh, a little bit of zinc oxide because uh, zinc oxide I will also lately use uh, into the cell. That's why I will add the electrolyte.
and now I will charge the battery and then I will test the voltage, the current and the time of spinning this motor. That cell is charged. I will disconnect my power supply and now I will check the voltage first 1.9 volts now I will check the amps Eight hundred milliamps, not bad. And now I will run this little motor. Okay, and that's it. So the same process I will do with the cell which have my conductive paint as a binder. Now I will repeat of making this active material, but this time with the binder, which is in my case my conductive ink. So first I will measure tin oxide, 1.5 grams. Now I will measure uh, the activated carbon, but uh, in my previous cell I add 0.5 grams of uh, activated carbon, but right now I will add 0 0.25 grams. Okay, now I will dry this one and then I will make this cell. So the active material is dried. So the second cell is charged and now I will disconnect from my power supply and first I will measure the voltage. And I get 2.1 volt. And you can also see that the voltage drop is really really stable. I mean I get really really slowly drop of the voltage in the first cell uh, i get the voltage of 1.9 volts and drops really really fast Two point one.
volt. Really nice. Now I will measure the current. And I get the current of 1.5 amps. Uh, the first cell have the current output of uh, 800 milliamps. And now the motor. And that's it. So actually I improved the second cell with adding of my uh, conductive ink uh, as the binder uh, into active material. And actually I improve the voltage, the current output and also the capacity. So guys, that's it for now and we see us in the next video. Bye.